Hi, in this video I'll show you how to simulate the pivot table tabular form that doesn't repeat items in Power Query. And what does that mean? Let's say we have a table of data and we want to turn it into something that's a little bit more easy to analyze. And usually with a small table of data we can do this pretty easy using pivot tables. And so a pivot table, generally you can have a tabular form that looks like this that repeats all items. So our make is repeated. You have our make items. Or you can have something like this where the we have a tabular form and it doesn't repeat those items. So it, some people might think this looks cleaner and some people might think that this misses a lot of data. But if you have a stakeholder who likes to see it this way and you've got a lot of data or you do this a lot or you want to automate some things and in the eventual output, make it look like this, but doesn't don't make it look like a pivot table for the user to do any kind of manipulation. We can do that in Power Query. So how do we do that? Let's get into our data here. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this into a pivot table just to show how it looks. So I go to Insert, Pivot Table. I will bring it into the location up here. Let's go to SOF1. Click OK. Make is over here. And let's just do a quantity over here in my values and my colors over here. The way I have my pivot table set up is I have it repeating. But I think by default, when you make a pivot table, it brings it up in compact view. And so you have this one. And you might need to go into tabular form. And it doesn't repeat automatically. So usually, I think in tabular form, it doesn't repeat. So it shows up like this. And this is the way we want it to show up without the subtotals here. I'm going to get rid of those subtotals. And this is what we want to simulate. And if we want to simulate this in Power Query, this is how we do it. Close this window. Bring this table in as Power Query. You can see that it's already set up as a table because the table tools contextual icon comes up. Um, what we can do is go under Data. So before we start up Power Query, just wanted to highlight some things. We noticed that we have a Buick Blue and 132, the, the quantity here, right? If I look here, there's a entry here for Buick Blue and this is 81. So we know that we have probably multiple records of this particular Buick Blue. And so that has to be taken account of. This is a good example of knowing your data. And also the other thing that we want to make note of is with the pivot table, we are sorting first column here alphabetically and then this second column is also sorted alphabetically. So we have to take that into account when we create our simulated pivot table using Power Query. So let's get into it. So I'll click here. This is already a table. You can see if I clicked inside the table tools, contextual icon is already there. If this wasn't a table already and I clicked inside, it will simulate creating that table for us. But since it's already done, I'll go to data, go to table and range, and the Power Query editor will come up. You see this change type step comes. It's looking at the source and it's changing those string text to the appropriate change types. Usually I don't take this. Sometimes Power Query is good and figuring it out and other times it's not that good but I usually I just delete that. What I want to do next is I want to group these and sum it up here. So I'll take this, press the shift key, select that cell, right click, group by, and we're going to group by and have, instead of count, we're going to sum. I'll go to sum here. I want to sum the quantity. Click OK. And it's summed up the quantity. Now let's sort. We do our first sort is sort ascending by the make. And then our second sort is sort by the color. So you can see here, I had that Buick there, Buick blue. Now it's totaled to 132. With this in mind, what I need to do is add a column that merges all this together. So when I do another grouping, it will keep this sort. So press the shift key, make that first selection there, and press and select the last column. I'll go to add column, and we're going to merge columns. So I want to add an additional column that merges all this. Since I know that there's no colons in any of my values here, I'll just select colon as the first one. I'll accept that merge column name. Click OK. We have our merge column here. And now I'm going to do a secondary grouping. So I'll just group by the make. Right click and then click group by. And I won't bother changing the column name because I'm going to change that later anyways. But for the operation, I want all rows. And I'll show you what all rows means. Click OK. 
And what all rows does is it brings back that grouping, but it brings back this table. So it brings back kind of a mini table of all the ACRA groupings. So we had three records under ACRA. I think there were seven records under Aldi. Let me scroll down here, right? And there was two records on the Buick, so I can click on that and we have our two records here. So that's what I needed. And with that in mind, I want to create an index column here. So I'm going to add column. And I want to add an index column. I'll also keep that default name. But I want to use a M code function called table that add index column. So it's going to count the records in the sub tables here. So use the open parentheses. We're going to take the count table, comma, and we're going to give it a new name. I'll just call it index and comma starting initial values one and then increment by one close parentheses click OK now we have another column called custom and it has a table in it but it's the same thing as this one but it added an extra column called the index column so it's basically counted these records one two three here we have seven records for Aldi I believe let me scroll down we have seven records uh, BMW's probably got three Buick's got two so it's counted in I don't need these other two columns anywhere in the maker account because it's all within this table now with the index. So right click that column, remove other columns. And I'm going to expand this now. Click on the double headed arrow here and have all these columns here. I don't need additional column name as a prefix. So uncheck that. Click OK. And now I have my original column plus my index. So with here now we see a pattern. Anytime the, it goes and it counts and you see the number one again there's a new make so Acura is here the number one shows up again here Aldi's here and then once it counts to seven it goes back to one BMW's here so there's our pattern so what we're gonna say here is we're gonna add a conditional column so let me select this column to kinda de-highlight everything else and add a column I want a conditional column here so here if my index column equals the number one the new columns is going to bring back the value from this column, make. So it's going to bring back that value. Otherwise, no. Any other number that's not a 1, it's going to bring back no. Click OK. And now we have our ACRA, which is that. It's going to see everything else is ACRA for the next two records. And since we have 1 here, it selects Audi as a new record here for this column. So that's all I need. So in essence, really all I need is this column, the custom column, and this merge column. So I'll press the control key since these are non-contiguous selections because this is something in the way. I just want this column and this column. Select that column with the control key. Right click and remove other columns. Since I selected this column first, it's going to show up first here and then this is going to be second. So select remove other columns. Now I've got my two columns here. Take this column and split it out because I want to split it out by the colons now. Right click split split by delimiter the columns was the delimiter that I created initially that's selected there click OK and now I have the columns I need so I'll call I don't need this column because it's the same thing but repeating so right click remove and I just need to rename everything now so this is make press enter this is model press enter and we'll just call this quantity and now I can bring this into back into my worksheet. Click close and load. Let's put it in cell K1, table, existing worksheet, cell K1. Select that, press OK. And now let's close this panel here. So you can see it's simulated it. It's copied it. We have our sort here by the first column and then the secondary sort here. And we have our quantity here, right? And so they all match up. If we had a small table, pivot tables probably be the way to go. But if we had a large table, or we did this on a recurring basis, or we had stakeholders where we didn't want them to mess with selecting anything, we just wanted them to see the output and not worry about what goes on behind the pivot table, then maybe Power Query would be a good option for you. If they like, if our stakeholders like to see it this way, not having a a filled out range here. Right, so that's would be the use of using Power Query to kind of simulate this type of view. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.